seepage pressure. Seepage is a flow of water in a permeable medium. Now in our case, geotechnical engineering, seepage pressure is a pressure offered by a flowing water on soil particles. Now as the water flows through the soil, it will exert force in the soil grains and this force will obviously be acting in the direction of the flow. And hence the resulting pressure is called as a seepage pressure. I have a figure here where you have a soil sample which is acted upon by a head of water and it flows through the soil sample in the direction of gravity through an outlet valve into a container. So PS marked here is nothing but the seepage pressure. Uh, I'm not sure if you would relate to this figure. This is what we call as a quicksand condition. Now to explain quicksand condition, seepage pressure will be of help. If you have a soil mass, the effective stress, sigma dash, is increased if the flow is downward as it exerts drag force and causes increase in interparticle force. Effective stress is the same effective stress that we have been discussing for a few classes now. And in general, when the flow is in a downward direction, the effective stress will be increased, which of course will be in the direction of the gravity. And it exerts a drag force. But when the flow is against the gravity, upward, the effective stress on the soil will be reduced. So, for example, when you have a soil sample here, and if the water level is here, and if it's allowed to move on its own force, it will obviously be flowing in this direction, right? In the gravity direction. So, this flow of water in downward direction will exert a force on the soil particle which increases the effective stress because the flow is in the downward direction and the gravitational force is in the same downward direction but if i attach a tube here like this the flow will be in the reverse direction right you have a higher head here so water flows from a higher head to a lower head so the flow will be in this direction or in short, when you are interested in a soil sample here, the flow will be upward. So when the flow is upward, which is against the gravity, the effective stress is reduced. And this is the head causing flow. As the head causing flow increases, the upward pressure increases and hence the effective stress reduces. And at one stage, the effective stress becomes zero. So at this stage, when the effective stress becomes zero, it's called as quicksand condition. The effective stress becomes zero means that the soil would behave like a fluid, which means at this condition, the upward force is equal to the downward weight. Or in short, when you have the soil mass here, and if it offers a weight at this level, and if the seepage pressure is equal to the weight or the stress offered by the soil at this level, it will cancel out each other, which makes the soil to attain a quicksand condition. If you have or had the habit of watching Cartoon Network, you would probably remember this character, Popeye. Now, Popeye obviously had a few instances when he was caught up in this quicksand condition. Now, when you consider the forces acting upward and downward in a soil mass of cross-sectional area A, the same figure is shown here. We have the soil mass whose unit weight is gamma saturated, head causing flow is marked as H, length of the sample is L, and here you have the seepage pressure acting upwards. So we'll try to have a mathematical relation. At this level, which is the bottom of the container, the weight, the total weight of the soil will be the unit weight multiplied by the volume. Unit weight is gamma saturated, 
soil is saturated because you have the water table here and the volume is length multiplied by the cross-sectional area the area perpendicular to the slide you see here so gamma saturated into L into A is the weight offered by the soil at this level now seepage pressure offered at this level upward will be equal to the unit weight of water gamma W into the head causing flow at this level is H plus L multiplied by A the area so I have this equation downward force is the weight of the soil gamma saturated into L into A unit weight multiplied by area into volume into, into length and upward seepage pressure is gamma W unit weight of water multiplied by head causing flow multiplied by the cross-sectional layer of the container so I can rewrite it as gamma W H A plus gamma W into L into A now gamma saturated is here and gamma W is here so I can rearrange gamma saturated minus gamma W into L A equal to gamma W into H A but we know that gamma sat minus gamma W is gamma dash or submerged unit weight so gamma dash submerged unit weight multiplied by L A equal to gamma W into H A A and A cancels out and I, I am left with H by L equal to gamma dash by gamma W now we know this term H by L it's a hydraulic gradient so hydraulic gradient equal to gamma dash by gamma W but you can have the submerged unit weight gamma dash equal to G minus 1 by 1 plus E multiplied by gamma W from the three phase system diagram so I can substitute this into the numerator and in short I equal to G minus 1 by 1 plus E gamma W by gamma W or in short I equal to G minus 1 by 1 plus E this is what we call as a critical hydraulic gradient IC so in a typical case like for example G specific gravity equal to 2.67 and E voids ratio equal to 0 0.67 the hydraulic gradient becomes unity 2.67 minus 1 by 1 plus 0.67 which is equal to 1 or unity so that is called as a critical hydraulic gradient and at the critical hydraulic gradient the shear strength of the soil becomes 0 and the soil behaves practically like a liquid and appear to be boiling which is called as a quicksand condition now the conditions in which a quicksand can be expected is listed here soil should be cohesion less which means it should not have a cohesive force it should be pure sand second condition is that the seed page pressure ps should be upward it should not be downward if it's downward it will increase the effective stress so when the flow is upward the seed page will be upward and that is the second condition and the third condition is that the critical hydraulic gradient should exist so when these three conditions are met you can expect quicksand condition we have a numerical problem here in a container filled with the following determine the upward gradient required to generate the quicksand condition for a porosity 40 percentage first example is that of a lead shorts of specific gravity 11.35 and the second example is that of sand of specific gravity 2.65 so porosity is given 40 percent n porosity is already given from which you can get the void ratio e the void ratio is 0 0.4 by 1 minus 0 0.4 which is 0 0.667 so this is a basic relation that we was fam we were familiar with in the third the first uh, three phase system diagram so i have this equation from which i can get the value of void ratio e as 0 0.667 so since the porosity is 40 percent you get the void ratio 0 
and case number one is that of lead shots. We know the equation critical gradient IC equal to G minus 1 by 1 plus E where G is given as 11.35 and E is 0.667. So the critical hydraulic gradient is 11.35 minus 1 by 1 1.667 which is 6.21 which means when you have lead shots of specific gravity 11.35 and void ratio 0.667 and if the H by L hydraulic gradient is 6.21 you can expect a quicksand condition when the flow is upwards. Second is sand. The only difference is that instead of 11.35 you have 2.65. So IC equal to 2.65 minus 1 by 1 1.667. So IC equal to 0.99, approximately equal to 1. So in short, in this example, when you have soil of specific gravity 2.65 and void ratio 0 0.667, and if it's pure sand plus if the seepage is upward, you can expect quicksand condition when H by L is equal to 0.99. Next, let's take an example of a practical case. You have an excavation to be performed in a stratum of clay, 9 meter thick, underlain by a bed of sand. In a trial borehole, the groundwater is observed to rise up to an elevation of 3 meter below the ground surface. Find the depth up to which the excavation can be safely carried out without the bottom becoming unstable under uplift pressure of groundwater. Specific gravity is 2.67, void ratio is 0.7, and if the excavation is to be safely carried out to a depth of 7 meter, how much should be the water table be lower in the vicinity of the trench? So in short, you have two parts of the same question. To understand the case, I have a figure here. You have clay 9 meter thick below which we have sand but when you have a trial borehole which is made through clay and then to the sand it was observed that the water table is at 3 meter below the ground level now you are asked to find the depth up to which an excavation can be safely carried out now, in practical cases, when an excavation is carried, what really happens is that you have the seepage, upward seepage pressure here. So, at this particular level, which demarcates the clay and the sand, if the surcharge load, which is load above it, is not sufficient enough to counter effect the seepage pressure, the soil will fail or the bottom will become unstable under the uplift pressure. So if you have for example one centimeter excavation this level will be safe. 50 centimeter excavation this level will be safe. Likewise when you keep on excavating the soil and at one stage the excavation will be so deep that at this level the overburden pressure will be very low compared to the uplift pressure. So the, so the bottom of the borehole will start to fail. You are asked to find that depth up to which the excavation can be carried out. Now in this figure I have marked as Z and 9 minus Z. So 9 minus Z is excavation depth and Z is the height of the clay layer above this line. Now the unit weight is not given. So we need the unit weight first. I've marked this level as xx and to get the unit weight we know that gamma equal to g plus sc by 1 plus e into gamma w and gamma saturated is when s is equal to 1 or 100 percentage. So gamma saturated is equal to g plus e by 1 plus c into gamma w. g is given as 2.7, e is given as 0.7 and we know the value of gamma w, 10 kilonewton per meter cube, approximately. So you can substitute that and 
2.7 plus 0.7 by 1 plus 0.7 into 10 will give you around 19.62 kN per meter cube. Now let Z be the minimum thickness of the clay layer to ensure the safety of the excavation and hence 9 minus Z is the depth of excavation. So at level XX let's take each terms that we are familiar with. So when sigma dash is equal to zero that is when the bottom becomes unstable. So for sigma dash to be equal to zero sigma minus u has to be equal to zero or gamma saturated into z minus gamma w into 6 should be equal to 0 or 4 sigma dash is equal to 0 sigma minus u should be equal to 0. We are talking about this level xx at which the total stress is gamma saturated into z and the pore pressure or the neutral stress at this level is gamma w multiplied by the height of the water table above it which is 6. So from this equation we can solve for z. Gamma saturated is already known to us. Gamma w is already known to us. So 19.62 multiplied by unknown z minus 10 or 9.8 multiplied by 6 equal to 0 from which you will get z as 3 meters here and 9 minus z equal to 6 meters. So in short when you excavate up to 6 meters it will be stable but once you excavate a bit more xx level will start to fail. Now the second part of the question is if the excavation is to be safely carried to a depth of 7 meters how much should the water table be lowered in the vicinity of the trench. So from the first part of the question we know that 6 meter depth is a maximum depth up to which the excavation can be safely carried out given the water table. But in this particular case you should carry out up to 7 meter excavation but to do that what you should do is you should lower the water table. So once you lower the water table the seepage pressure will be lower and hence you'll be able to execute a 7 meter excavation. So I have an unknown height of the water table here. Earlier it was 6 here and 3 above it. Now it, was an un it is an unknown height h. Our interest is to get the unknown height h so that you can excavate 7 meters. So h be the head of the water table at level xx. So to have sigma dash is equal to 0, you need sigma minus u equal to 0 or gamma saturated into 9 minus 7 which is this layer minus u which is the pore pressure which is equal to gamma w to unknown h equal to 0. So the first term is a sigma and the second term is u. First term there's nothing but the total stress at this level which is a surcharge which is equal to gamma sat into 2 meters or 9 minus 7 meters and pore pressure or neutral stress at this level is gamma w multiplied by the head height h of the water table so that's written here so from this the only unknown is h because we know gamma saturated and we know gamma w so solving that will give you the value of h as 4 meters. In short, if the water table which was earlier at a height of 6 meter above xx, if reduced to 4 meter above xx, you can excavate the excavation depth from 6 meters to 7 meters safely without causing a failure at this level xx. Or talking in terms of water table it should be lowered from 3 meter to 5 meter from the ground level.